Now, do you have any other houses you might be selling? Maybe something that needs some TLC? Kyle, even if you can't wholesale that property, agents, teams would pay you for that lead. Hi, this is Dale Archdeacon again with Smart Inside Sales. And we're gonna be listening to some more live cold calling sessions on YouTube giving feedback so that we can help support these agents in improving what they're doing in their conversations. We are a scripting and dialogue training company and we specialize in teaching agents and ISAs how to have great conversations with their leads, convert more leads, set more appointments, and win more deals, ultimately. That's what we do, that's what we do every day. We're like a, a fractional sales manager, sales trainer for real estate teams as well as individual agents and ISAs. We're gonna be listening to Kyle Krasen He's doing a six hour cold calling session, which is fantastic. And listen, I really commend the guy for doing six hours in a row. You know, if you aren't able to uh, consistently lead generate every single day, doing a longer stretch like six hours could work for you where you try to get more contacts. But you know, me personally, when I was doing it and uh, as I run real estate teams and I run inside sales departments, uh, generally you find that a two to three hour session is really about the most that you can do in any one stretch because otherwise you just get really too burned out uh, doing it and you, you start to get very flat in what you're doing. So let's hear what uh, Kyle has to say here. Let's, let's see how this goes. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Saturday, Saturday, January 16th. And in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is cold calling for six hours. So the goal is to dial for six hours and generate three leads. So the title here says that he's cold calling for wholesaling. So basically he's going to be calling, looking for people basically who want an offer on their property. And if he's wholesaling, uh, if you're not familiar with what wholesaling is, uh, I've done it myself. It's where you would reach out to a potential homeowner. You find out whether they'd be willing to accept an offer on their property. You go take a look at the property, you figure out, and, and typically you're going to be looking for property that needs to be improved, property that needs to be repaired. And so you're look basically you're bird dogging is the other thing that we call it. You're bird dogging for investors, uh, flippers, people who will come in, fix up the property, and resell it. And so wholesaling basically is you just get a property that needs repair under contract for an amount that is lower than what you believe an investor will pay you for it. You get that on contract with the seller. You find an investor who's willing to take that project. You mark it up by a little. Could be somewhere between two thousand dollars and twenty thousand dollars. Uh, you mark it up, you sell it to that investor who then takes the project on. And this works out a lot, you know, for people who may not have the money to invest themselves. Cold calling gets boring. Like you go a couple minutes where you won't, nobody picks up their phone. So it's nice to kind of have another screen open where you could either be chatting with people on Facebook or maybe researching a topic or something. So that if someone does pick up the phone over here on the other screen on Mojo, the name is still there. So you don't have to flip between tabs and you can answer appropriately right when they pick up the phone so that's the goal at the end of this so i'm gonna so that's great advice yeah definitely have those two screens open you can be multitasking so when you're lead generating you want to be messaging people texting leads that you've already spoken to before emailing people that you've spoken to before so that you can really um maximize your amount of time so that you can maximize the number of contacts that you're getting while you're prospecting I'll show you some conversations that i have today and then at the end of this video, I'm also going to pull my reports so we can see how I did. So hope you enjoy the video. All right, plug the phone in here. And I love you, Kyle, but uh, <laughs> Kyle has definitely rolled out of bed uh, and he's going to make it happen. But listen, I'm going to say in his defense, Kyle looking like he just rolled out of bed doing this is far better than you being all showered and ready and not actually executing. So the fact that this guy's going to execute huge props in my coaching and training business my trainers are constantly talking to our clients our students about trying to get them to make more contacts and kyle is stepping out and doing exactly what you need to do and what our clients need to do in order to move their businesses forward and sell more houses Hello? yeah hey Christopher, it's kyle how you doing good awesome man i my name's kyle i'm uh, i'm sorry to kind of i know it's an unexpected phone call i was actually just calling about a, a uh, I, was, I was just calling about a property I think you own. So he did a great intro with his script there. Yeah, my name is Kyle. I'm sorry. I know this is a really uh, unanticipated call or a call out of the blue. I apologize for that. So starting off by recognizing the fact that you are just calling these people out of the blue and apologizing for it will help delay the amount of time before that uh, complete stranger kicks you off their phone. I was, just, I was just wanting to see if you had thought about selling that house there and if you'd consider an offer. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was actually fixing to uh, do an MLS for it, enlisted. Okay, gotcha. Um, so he's using a very simple script, right? Hey, I'm sorry, I know this is a call out of the blue. I, I just see that you own a property over at whatever address, which he bleeped out, uh, and said, I just wanted to see if you thought about selling that and whether you would be interested in an offer. Um, and so it turns out this lead is actually thinking about listing it on the MLS, uh, which means he's thinking about listing it with a real estate agent, so most likely. Let's see what Kyle does here. Do you already have him? I spoke to somebody, I think, probably from your company about it. They called me, and uh, uh, the tenant is in it right now. She's, uh, she's been in it for four years, and she's going to be moving out. She's in her job. Um, she was going to buy it, mm -hmm. but her job with COVID was affected because she's a health care worker. She can go to work when yeah. they're not breaking. I agree with what Kyle just said in his little uh, clip there. Uh, part of real estate is getting them to talk way better if you can get them to talk than if they're not talking, especially if they're not talking and they're resistant to you. Now you're in a lot of trouble and it requires a lot more sales skill. So this is great. Kyle's just keeping his mouth shut, letting the guy talk. Okay. So she's not going to buy it. Do you know what she's going to, what, what's the plan? Is she, uh, she is, she's going to move out and I was going to, I'm going to lift it. Okay. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, I think he could have improved what he did there. Uh, he acknowledged uh, that the guy said that the tenant wasn't going to buy it. Uh, and rather than Kyle asking what the plan is, the guy already said what the plan was, which was to list it on the MLS. So now the guy has now repeated himself. And so maybe that lead won't notice that he had to repeat himself. But a lot of people will notice that. And, it, and in the back of their mind, they're like, are you not listening to me? I told you that I was going to list it on the MLS. And just remember, Kyle essentially is acting as a salesperson, right? And a lot of people are resistant to salespeople. He's called these people out of the blue and now made this person repeat the same thing back to him again. And so that can have a negative impact on how long this lead will talk to him and how the lead, whether the lead's building rapport with Kyle or not. So I think instead what Kyle could have done there is just said, got it. And so you said you were planning on listing it on the MLS. Next question. Something like, have you met with a real estate agent yet? Or uh, how did you decide to list it on the MLS? Uh, or he could even ask, you know, if I was able to give you an acceptable offer without you needing to get onto the MLS and spend a bunch of money to pay a real estate agent to sell it, is that something you'd be interested in? Could have been ready for a close right there. Do you already have an agent that you're working with? No, I was going to do a uh, for sale by owner for a couple of weeks anyway, and then. There it is. That's why I said uh, most likely he would use an agent. Turns out he was going to fizzbo it. Um, wants to list would Fizbo at first no real motivation I I disagree with that I disagree with that statement I think that I think Kyle's uh, saying that way too early uh, unless Kyle Kyle's business model is to look for people with very specific pain points who are willing to articulate them right off the bat if that's the case then I understand why Kyle would say the guy has no real motivation I personally would say that it's too early to say that I've spent the first few, you know, probably five or six years of my real estate sales career, specifically working expires and for sale by owners. This guy sounds like a fantastic lead to me. Um, he's willing to talk to the guy. He's articulating what his plan is. He doesn't sound adversarial or difficult in any way so far. Uh, and he is, he's pretty clear about what he wants to do. And so I would argue that this is a really good lead. That guy is going to, I believe that guy is going to sell that property most likely. Now we just need to find out about money and whether it makes sense. What, what are you going to be asking for it? If you don't mind me asking. There's the money. I was, so the estimate has got it at like between 202, 205. And I don't know if they're considering like the, uh, um, the $30,000 kitchen upgrade I did to like granite and stuff like that. Oh, nice. The, the whole solid surface floors and everything. Um, I don't know. I was going to start somewhere in that range probably. I was thinking about 215. I see what Kyle's saying that they can't add value. Again, Kyle's approaching this from an investor standpoint. He's trying to look for a big fat margin. He's looking for ugly houses that cause problems for people to where he as a wholesaler can come in. He can get them enough money or get them something that would make them happy to alleviate that burden from them, mark it up a little bit, give it to an investor who can flip that property. Um, you know, what I would probably do is uh, continue investigating this a little bit farther because we don't know exactly, you know, it sounds like the FISBO is talking about wanting even more than what the Zestimate or Zillow Estimate says for his property. Again, the Zestimate, Zillow Estimate can really fluctuate wildly. Um, 
uh, but this FISBO seems to have done some homework, seems to be educated, wants market value for his property. I would still say that he's not, he's still not quite a lost cause. All right, yeah, we're actually looking for some property that we can fix up ourselves. So if you already put 30,000 bucks into it, just on the kitchen and stuff in the floor, probably wouldn't be a good fit on this one, just to be straight up with you. Do you happen to have, do you have any other houses you might be selling? Maybe something that needs some TLC? No, I just own that house, and then I, I own my house in Texas. Okay, cool. I can tell you this, man. Uh, as a real estate agent uh, and, you know, running and uh, coaching real estate teams and agents across North America, Kyle, even if you can't wholesale that property, agents, teams would pay you for that lead. They would pay you good money for what you just did. There will be investors in the market that would take something like that would shine it up just a little bit more and charge a pre put a tenant in there and then charge a premium to would be investors who want turnkey rentals, right? Who don't want to do anything. And those are the people that have more money than time, right? Those are the professionals, the busy professionals, physicians, attorneys, things like that, who are have a uh, much more disposable income. They're looking to make a return, but they really don't have the time to find the deal themselves or to fix it up or do any of that kind of stuff. You could place it with them, or you could even just sell this guy's information to a real estate agent who will go and close it and even potentially pay you, a, 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 well, they can't pay him a commission depending on the state that he's in, but they could find a way to help compensate Kyle for the work that he did. All right, see ya. So with this guy, he's in no rush to sell. He already fixed it up. He has no other properties. This is one where in the past I would have probably tried to give this to give him an offer, but um, it just doesn't even make sense to take the time to comp this one to give him an offer. There's no value we can add. He's in no rush to sell. I'm just going to assume that Kyle knows his market better than I do, or Kyle knows enough about his market that this guy's talking about a property that would be a retail sale, in which case there wouldn't be an opportunity to wholesale. What I would say, though, is just do some more investigation. Because, again, I don't know what market Kyle's in, um, but all I heard was that the guy put a $30,000 kitchen in. It doesn't mean the rest of the house is nice. It doesn't mean that the rest of the property is nice. Uh, and doesn't mean that there aren't some upsides there. And it doesn't also mean uh, we didn't even get to why the guy's selling it. We didn't even get to what the guy's going to do with the money. Um, we didn't get to any of his pain point. All we heard from the guy was what he planned to do but we didn't hear the why there was no pain so stay in the conversation until you get to the pain or what he wants what he's trying to get to that there will be the motivation that you need ask him what the condition of the property is the rest of the property not just the kitchen and see if there's a uh, some kind of value add that we could do there hey it's kyle how are you good awesome I, I was actually just, uh, I know this call is a little bit unexpected here. I was just calling about a property I think that you own. Yeah. I was just wanting to see if you had thought about selling that property there and if you'd consider an offer. I, I thought about it. I thought about it, but I've had it for about 12 years. And, nice. Uh, and I've been, I lived in it for a little bit and then I moved and I kept running it out and it's been, basically the mortgage is like 600 and I've been, about 1200 a month. Nice. It, so it's almost paid off, and I'm just, I don't know, I'm thinking about selling it maybe, but uh, it won't be any time soon, I don't think. Okay. No worries. Do you happen to have maybe any other houses you might be selling? No, I wish I did. I agree with what he's saying right there. Uh, in fact, I would say this if you're going to do cold calling like this and you're going to get people, uh, you know, it. What he, what Cal said when he first started this, which is absolutely true, there, there can be a long time in between conversations that you have. Listen, if you're going to be making these calls and you're going to invest your time and energy in doing this, I would say a rule of thumb is shoot a number to every single person that you talk to. The worst they can say is no. Shoot a number to every single person you talk to, even if it's a Hail Mary. And that could sound something like, Got it. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, after I find out the condition of the property, he says he may not be selling it for a while. He's getting good rents from it. Um, you know, I'm looking it up and I might say, yeah, you know what? It looks like I could probably give you X for that property. Is that something you'd be interested in? <laughs> right. Gotcha. Right, right. Okay. 
No worries. Well, I, I appreciate your time, man. Uh, I'll uh, maybe try back in another year or so in case you change your mind. Oh, man, he bailed too early. Listen, managing tenants can suck. Managing tenants can be a pain in the ass. And if you can figure out something else this guy would do with the money that would be better for him than 600 bucks a month coming in from that rental, which he's not really getting 600 bucks a month, right? He said the mortgage is 600, he gets 1200. Uh, he also has maintenance, repairs, all those sorts of things that he has to do throughout the year. And I'm a landlord myself. I know that it's not that crazy hard, but a lot of landlords do get tired of the process and do get tired of the phone calls and may want to put their money into something else. So you might as well ask, see how that's going, and make them an offer. Yeah, you never know. I might yeah. just, you know, decide to get rid of it. But what's right. the plan? Are you guys looking to, like, maybe demolish them and put up new houses? Or what's the... And I like the fact that Kyle is actually uh, reviewing his own information here and putting that note on there, right? He's critiquing himself. He's critiquing his own call. That's huge. Listening to your own conversations to be able to go back and sort of uh, you know, armchair quarterback it is super helpful. It strengthens the uh, perception. It strengthens the processing time that you have between, you know, it's sort of like those uh, movies, The Matrix, right? Where you have that bullet time where you, you slow down how quickly that conversation is coming at you and you can do a lot more computations on where should I be in this conversation and where should I go next? And it drastically improves your skill set as a salesperson. No, not really. Yeah, we don't we don't do any new development stuff, so we're not like builders. We just do flips, and uh, or if it if the rent makes sense, we'll fix up some houses and then keep them. So uh, long the same house. It was my parents' house. It was my parents' house, and it was like a 1977 build. So mm -hmm. we got into the inside, changed the bathrooms, tore down some walls, put up a beam. There you go. Changed the floors and everything. You know, just, yep. That's the way to do it, man. You know. That's the way to do it. That's why you're getting 1200 bucks. <laughs> Here's another good question for someone like that who's like, yeah, my property's great. I make so much money on it. La, la, la. Asking them a question like, got it. So if you did sell it, what would you use the money for? Or if you did sell it, why would you sell it? If you did decide to sell it, what would be a reason that would make you sell it? Right? Or what kind of under what kind of scenario would you want to sell the property? So asking those types of questions, taking the person from their current mental state, which is this property is fantastic and telling you how great it is, forcing them to pretend that they are selling it or making the choice to do that, and then asking them what those circumstances are. Hey, Travis, it's Kyle. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? All right. Awesome. I was actually, uh, I know this call is kind of unexpected here. I was calling about a property I think you own on it. I would honestly change Kyle's script a little bit because Kyle's going in completely blind. Think about it this way. These people that he's calling, they have no idea who he is, why he's calling, and he just calls up, uses their name assumptively, which is good, but then just waits, and it's sort of a mystery call. And if I called you up and said, Hi, stranger, uh, how are you today? You'd be thinking, who the hell are you and why are you calling me? So I would actually rather speed up his script a little bit to something more like, Hi stranger, this is Kyle. I know this call is completely out of the blue, but I'm looking in for properties in X neighborhood and I saw you own this property on whatever street. And I wanted to see if you might be interested in an offer on it. So just go straight in, it's called the push in method, where you aren't going to pause and engage them in conversation. You're gonna go in, here's who I am, I know who you are, this is why I'm calling a plausible reason and apologize for the fact that I'm doing it out of the blue and what I want to know. Very clear, very to the point, very straightforward. Aspen Drive in Clarksville. I just wanted to see if you had thought about selling the house there. Well, I, I got to call you back. Uh, my wife gave me a call to her. Okay. You want me to give you a call? I know it's the weekend. You want me to maybe just reach out to you on Monday? Something about his wife and he needs to talk to his wife. We are not getting off the phone with this guy uh, until we figure out whether or not he'd even be willing to sell and if he has a number. Yes, sir. Okay, I can do that. All right. Well, thanks, Travis. I'll talk to you Monday. Okay. All right. Bye. Mm, I would not do that. Let's hear what Kyle has to say about why he did that. That is a lead that I'm going to... It sounds like he might be interested in selling. Sounds like he needs to ask his wife. So I will follow up on Monday... And that's really all you can ask for with these cold calls is just somebody that might be interested 
and then be sure that you add them to your CRM so that you can follow up properly. So I would not have bailed on that call. That was way too early. Listen, the guy got has to talk to his wife. I mean, usually the, the person needs to talk to their spouse or partner, whatever they are, right? That guy is not gonna remember who the hell Kyle is. He's not gonna remember the fact that he called last week. Uh, the guy sounded like he was half asleep. And so I want to talk to the guy a little bit longer, get some more information from him, build some rapport with him so that even if I have to follow up next week, he's going to be much more likely to remember who I am and take my call. And here's what I would also do before you get off the phone with that guy. I would try to get his cell phone number from him. Uh, hey, I'm looking for. Hi, this? My name's Kyle. I'm calling about a property over. Yeah, he said he slipped the intro, right? He was getting tired. This is what I'm talking about, man. When you do this marathon stuff, you get tired. Kyle broke from his normal intro, which was nice and assumptive. So even Kyle recognized that. Uh, I was actually just wanting to see if you had thought about selling that house there. I have. Okay, awesome. Did you have any, uh, like a time frame in mind that you'd be looking to sell? Okay, now I think that you hear how standoffish she was, where she said, I have. She's still suspicious about who this complete stranger is that randomly called her on her phone and is now asking her about selling her her asset, her property. She gave him a little bit by saying, I have. I think that instead of Kyle continuing to push with discovery, he needs to explain himself, okay? You can hear it in her voice. She's probably a bit of an S personality if you don't know the disc profiles. She's standoffish right now, so I'd rather see him explain himself. Oh, okay, that's great. Well, you know, I do reach out to homeowners, property owners in the neighborhood. I do it every day. I am actively looking to purchase properties in the area and I'm looking for properties that either I can fix up and, and add value to, or I'm even looking at properties that I could purchase and uh, then keep as a rental. Do you have any, uh, like a time frame in mind that you'd be looking to sell it by? Well, I've already, somebody else has already given me an offer, so. Okay. Um, gotcha. There are, there is, uh, and it would be as is. Right. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Kyle got really lucky that the that this person shared what the actual offer was on the property. So I'm I'm curious to see how this plays out. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing for Kyle. Did you do any work to the inside of it at all, or is it kind of like in in um as is shape? I guess like is it up, up to date or is that old, outdated? I should say. Uh, well, when you say outdated, what do you mean by outdated? Like has the have the. Yeah, like the kitchen and the bathrooms, have they been renovated in the last like 10, 15? You know what I'd honestly do before you even go into this? I would find out what this person thought about that $80,000 offer. I want to get into the head of the prospect I'm talking to and see where they're at with that. Maybe that might tell me, oh, that's way too low. Or they might tell me, oh yeah, I'm pretty happy with that offer, right? So focus on the person. Where are they at? What's the next step? And are they interested in receiving another offer from me? And if they're interested in receiving another offer from me, whether or not they are actually, I'm going to then find out more information about the property to see, because what I'm thinking right now as I'm listening to Kyle is, I don't know if 80K blows me out of the water and I would need to offer 50 on that property, or if 80K is a solid offer to where I might be able to come in at 85. I have no idea. And, you know, and then sell it for 90 uh, or assign it for 90 and make 5K in the middle. I don't really know where he's at. I think he may analyze this once we get done with this call. I imagine nobody's living in it with the uh, with the flooring issues. Uh, so, we just had so don't say it as I assume nobody's living in it because that person can take offense to that. It could be vacant and unlivable or they could think that it's perfectly well livable and they have a tenant in there and they're proud of the fact that they have a tenant in there. You just never know where people's heads are at. Keep it uh, purely investigative where you're asking, so is anyone living there now? Rather than uh, influencing or putting your own opinion in there, in which case a lot of times it can be wrong or it can be taken the wrong way or it can offend them. you know about how old the roof might be on there? Uh, I think it was replaced in 12 or 11. 
Okay. That's pretty, so that's a solid roof. How about the uh, the HVAC unit? Do you know how old that is? Uh, that's probably right now, it's probably going on 12 years. Okay. 12 years, okay. Well, I think, I mean, that's basic, that's the basic information that we need. I mean, do you mind if I, uh, what I'll do is I'll take this, I'll, I'll do some research on it, and if I can come back with something better than 80, you want me to, is this the best number to reach you at? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, gotcha. Now, does, does, that, does that include you guys covering uh, the closing costs and all that? Uh, yeah, typically speaking, it would cover the closing costs if you if you don't want to pay closing costs. Obviously, our offer just comes down just to include that in there, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, but, um, you guys can call me back. Uh, okay, is this the best number? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, this is the best number you can reach me at. Okay, cool. All right, yeah, I'll do some research and I'll give you a shout. Thanks for calling. Uh, like I said, I've already got another offer. Okay. Kyle here in this conversation is getting super, super lucky that this lead is giving him that kind of information. And really, this lead wants another offer from Kyle. He wants to compare offers. So I would say Kyle's lucky that this guy's pushing for this kind of thing because otherwise, uh, what would frequently happen is Kyle will get off the phone with this guy and he'll go ahead and sign that offer because he has an offer in hand. And, and here's the issue. Who's Kyle? Who does he represent? He's just another random phone call that this guy got. And the guy probably has gotten a bunch of cold call or a, a bunch of letters in the mail. He's probably gotten other phone calls. Um, and so Kyle's just another me too. So what Kyle needs to do before he gets off this phone, <clears throat> he needs to find out, hey, how do you feel about that offer? You feel like it should be higher. Um, are you planning on signing that offer? Would you wait uh, for me to be able to submit an offer to you? And then uh, I would have wanted to solicit when, if there was a deadline on that or when this seller uh, felt like he was gonna make a decision. Again, the seller offered that to him, but make sure you're getting that every single time. Also, I wanna build some rapport with this guy and I wanna instill some confidence in this guy. So I'm gonna tell him about who I am or who my company is, right? I'm gonna do a little bit of bragging. Now, if Kyle is a solo wholesaler, okay, you know what? Talk about the investors that you represent and I'll just make it up off the cuff. Uh, let's assume that I'm just a solo wholesaler. I'm just randomly calling around neighborhoods, which I've done back in my past. Um, but now I have the understanding of how I need to position myself if I were to do something like that. And I might say, you know, Mr. Seller, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Um, I'm looking forward to doing the research so that I can give you the best possible offer that, that you're gonna get in this entire market and beat out those other competitors. And just to let you know who we are, um, you know, I represent a, a, an investment, uh, a group of investors who have 25 years of experience of doing this. Uh, they have their crews in place. They know exactly what they're doing. Uh, they are very sharp with their numbers so that they are able to provide the highest offers possible to the homeowners that we work with. And I really look forward to putting something together for you. And also just wanted to let you know that we have X number of years of track record of doing this. So you can be guaranteed that if we sign a contract together, we are going to be sitting at the settlement table. You'll get everything that was expected. Everything will be put in front of you ahead of time. So you know exactly what's happening. So I'm just kind of like just demonstrating the professionalism, how we work. Sounds good. You mind me asking who's the outfit buying that one? It's kind of a small world. We all kind of know each other. And before I asked who's buying it, I want to tell them how great we are and all of our experience, by the way. Man, uh, I'll do some research on this and I'll give you a shout. Um, maybe even maybe even later today. It usually doesn't take me that long to look okay, at it. That's fine. The fact that Kyle showed up and he did this and he's putting in the time and he's doing it consistently is the difference between success and failure, especially if you're a real estate agent or ISA watching this. Um, you know, for us in residential sales, that that really makes the difference. It's huge. But you can also hear as you listen to Kyle's conversations, in some cases, he gives up too early. In some cases, he doesn't do enough discovery with them. And in the case of the last call that we heard him do, uh, there was a, definitely a, a, a potentially a lost opportunity for him to really establish rapport, establish credibility, because although it turned out great that Kyle got that guy, the guy gave him so much information, which is unusual. Uh, usually people play their car cards much closer to their vest and really kind of gave Kyle what he needed. And if you listen to the things that the seller told Kyle voluntarily, 
Those are some questions that Kyle was missing in his discovery. We have no idea why that guy's selling that property. We have no idea why that guy lives in Kansas. The guy mentioned that he goes to service at 530. We didn't talk about that whatsoever. Those are all rapport building opportunities, right? Do we know whether the guy enjoyed being a landlord or not? Do we know whether the guy intends to be a landlord again or not? Do we know what the guy's going to do with the money? What's he going to invest it in? Is he going to put it in the stock market? Is he going to buy more real estate? You don't have to ask these questions as though you're interrogating somebody. It's just rapport building, right? It gets people to talk about themselves, who they are, what they're thinking about and how they're doing it. And if you show a genuine interest in them, they will remember you much more and they'll remember you over your competitors. So. Kyle, I'd say great job, man. Keep doing it. Uh, hopefully you watch this and you implement some of the tactics and strategies that I'm talking about in here. Um, and a lot of the stuff that we teach at Smart Inside Sales are built on the foundational principles that we have for having great conversations with leads, getting on the same side of the table with them and helping move to a mutually beneficial result, which ideally in the residential sales world is us listing uh, their home for sale or us representing them to purchase. And for you guys in the investment world, it would be getting a deal uh, that's a good fit for both parties. So thanks for checking this out.